Welcome to my lecture online and here we have our next example that we're going to solve using the Lagrangian technique and of course we're finding the equation of motion and what do we find the equation of motion of? Well we have a pendulum consisting of a bar with mass m length l and attached to the bar is a solid disc. Now in this particular example the disc itself is not going to be rotated so it's fixed attached to the bar and both are swinging back and forth. To give us a little bit of a hint already, we can see that if this is the length of the bar and this is the angle of theta, then this distance from there to there is L cosine theta and this distance, the height from its lowest point to some point other than its lowest point based on the angle of theta can be described as L minus L cosine of theta. Of course, you could also write this as L times 1 minus the cosine of theta, whichever you prefer. So now we're ready to find the equation of motion. To do that, we're going to need to find the kinetic and potential energy to define the Lagrangian. So let's start with the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy will be equal to the kinetic energy of the rod plus the kinetic energy of the, um, of the disc. And so I've said R and D stands for rod and disc. And maybe I'll write KEs because that way it makes more sense. So. Uh, let's do it like that. Okay, the kinetic energy of a rod, since it's oscillating back and forth attached to a single point, we have to use rotational kinetic energy. So this will be equal to one half the moment of inertia of the rod times omega squared plus one half the moment of inertia of the disc times omega squared. Now, the moment of inertia disk, we can assume the disk to be a point mass at a distance L away from the point of rotation. That would be the easiest way to do that. So this becomes equal to one half times the moment of inertia of a disk rotating about its end would be one third the um, mass of the disk times the length, and I'll use a small l, length squared, like this, that's the moment of inertia, and omega can be written as theta dot and we have to square that plus one half times the mass notice the mass of the disc and the mass of the rod are assumed to be the same and so there'll be a point mass of m l squared that's an l there squared times again theta dot squared so here we have one sixth plus one half that would be three sixths or four sixths or two thirds so this combines to one sixth plus one half which is 3 6 1 6 that's 4 6 that's 2 thirds yeah just want to make sure I got my arithmetic correct 2 thirds m l squared theta dot squared and that would be the kinetic energy of the system assuming of course that the disk itself is not rotating it's fixed so let's go ahead and put a box around that okay now we need to find the potential energy so the potential energy would be the sum of the potential energy of the rod plus the potential energy of the disc. And so it's the amount of distance, the center of mass, which is at the middle point, that would be the CM of the rod, is lifted from its lowest point. Now notice since the center mass is the halfway point, this distance here would be half of this distance. So we can say that would be equal to mg times the quantity L minus L times the cosine of theta divided by 2. That would be the increase in potential energy of the rod as the, the rod and disc swing up. And that would be then plus mg times L minus L times the cosine of theta, but not divided by 2 for the potential energy of the disc. So that would be this distance right here. And then you can see we can add those together. So the potential energy of the two combined would be one plus a half or three halves mg times L minus, yeah, maybe I'll put brackets around it like that, parentheses around it, L minus L times the cosine of theta, like this. Or you could factor out the L, write as three over two mgl times one minus the cosine of theta. That might be easier to work with. So now we have the potential energy, we have the kinetic energy, now we can say that the Lagrangian will be the difference between the two. So that will be two-thirds m l squared 
theta dot squared minus the potential energy, that would be minus 3 over 2 mg L times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Okay, now we're ready to solve this. First, we need to find the partial of L with respect to theta dot. So this is the general formula. This will be a general um, variable. So we're going to use theta dot here. And that is equal to, now notice that this will go to zero. And here we end up 2 times 2 or 4 thirds m l square theta dot. And now when we take the derivative, the time derivative of that, the ddt of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot, we take the derivative of that, we get 4 thirds m l squared theta dot dot, double dot, because now we have acceleration. And then we need to find the partial of L, the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. And now we realize that this will go to zero. Notice that 3 halves mgl times 1 goes to zero, but the minus times the minus cosine of this, that will not go to zero. So the minus times the minus is plus, but when we take the derivative of the cosine, we get the negative sign. So this becomes minus 3 over 2 mgl times the sine of theta. So now we use this equation right here and we end up with the equation of motion. So we take this part which is 4 thirds mL squared theta double dot minus this quantity right here, the minus times the minus is a plus 3 over 2 mGl times the sine of theta and we know that this therefore must equal zero. Now we can simplify things a little bit because the m's cancel out. One of the l's cancel out. We have 4 thirds, 3 halves. I don't think we can do much with that. But that being simplified, I think we can now write this as 4 thirds l theta double dot plus 3 over 2g sine theta equals 0. Of course, we can manipulate that a little bit more, but this is probably good enough. And let's assume that is the final form then of our equation of motion for the pendulum made out of a rod and a solid disk at the end. And that, well, I'm back and uh, <laughs> I just realized that I forgot to mention something. Notice that we assume small oscillations. And for small oscillations, we can say that the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So we can actually replace this by theta. And then if we divide both sides by L and multiply both sides by 3 over 4, we can then say that theta double dot plus, so we multiply both sides by 3 over 4, we get 9 over 8. So that gives us 9 over 8 g over l times theta equals zero. And that may be a preferred way of leaving it in its final format. But the most important part is for that to be a more proper equation. Of course, if we use large oscillations, we need to keep the sine of theta. And then, of course, it'd be more difficult to solve this equation. But if we assume small oscillations, so sine of theta is approximately equal to theta in radians, of course, then we replace that by theta. We divide both sides by L. We then also multiply both sides by 3 over 4 to get rid of this here. And we can write it in a more simplified format. And that's probably better to do. Oh, there we go. That's how we do that.